Fifth Street Press, but uh, no. And so I was into those things because they allowed me to do something different than my neighbors, because I was from Maine, and everyone around me wanted to talk about Red Sox and cars. And I wanted to talk about superheroes and Star Wars, and so I had uh, an issue. So I would talk Red Sox and cars a little bit during the day, not to get punched, and then I'd go online and talk to people about Star Wars or whatever uh, from afar. This merged, uh, this, this kept going in my life as something personal until around 05 or 06 when uh, I co-founded PodCamp. And the idea there was I was really into media making. I was into podcasting and blogging and video blogging. And what could we do? And wow, we're going to change the world. It's going to be a revolution, man. Uh, without flowers and patchouli. Um, and so I was really into it, and I was really into community. And so at the very first PodCamp event, uh, the second day of the event, Jeff Pulver was there. Jeff co-founded uh, Vonage back in the day. He, he ran an event called Vaughn, which was for Voice on the Net. And he was starting an event called Video on the Net, which is a traditional conference. <coughs> he was so blown away by the unconference model. He was like, we've got to put that action in here. We've got to put that community feeling in here. Everybody knows everybody. And how do I do something with that? And I have no idea how much you make, but I'd love to hire you. And you can come work at my company. And I said, let's do it. And he was like, we'll talk about it. I said, no, I'm in. I quit. I'll give my resignation Monday. And he was like, whoa. So <laughs> and, and I joined. So I've been doing community professionally in some form or another for a while. And most recently, my company, Human Business Works, has been virtual community. I rarely talk about myself this much in a row, ever. So <laughs> I like sweating inside a little. But I wanted to set the tone of why I understand community and what it means to me. Because I, it's been my business for some amount of time. Uh, only, like a lot of people, community didn't make me much money for a lot of time, uh, and then it did. So uh, now I'm, I have this whole thing around content, community, and marketplace. And I guess if people think they need to take notes, that would be the first one. Um, content, community, and marketplace is we get one of the three usually right. We sometimes get two of the three usually right. We rarely get all three right. Uh, in this case, because we're talking about events and meetings and because I actually know which room I'm in and I'm sober, uh, I won't talk as much about Marketplace uh, because you have your ways of monetizing it. For the most part, you're, you know, you're monetizing by uh, subscription fees and, and membership dues and things like that. But I will talk a little bit about the online space. Uh, really left brain thinkers in the room? Just put a hand up just to... Nope. I apologize ahead of time. Uh, I have ridiculously right brain. And I do go way off on tangents, and I will forget where I'm talking about. And I'm so sorry. And Jeff, actually, Jeff Hurt really did a great job of uh, helping break down what I could do better, and I just didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believed every word he said, but I mean, it's a lot like when you go to like you know your fitness coach or whatever, and they're like, yeah, do this, this, and this, and you're like, yeah, and you don't. Uh, or you know when you buy the uh, the new abs diet book because there's a new abs diet book. Uh, it turns out totally different than the other one. Uh, it's Orger, and uh, and I don't know, but I keep looking for a bowl of ice cream uh, in there, and it's not in there. So yeah. I'm a little off on my abs diet. It turns out, but I very I'm a very right brain thinker, so I apologize. I, I really did spill juice all over my speech. Uh, which I just wrote. So, <laughs> not lying. Um, so what I do with speeches, just FYI, is a lot like what Billy did last night, only I won't make you sing. Oh. And uh, I, I build from the, the audience, and I build from the community who I talk to. And that's part of what I think matters, is because I mean, we've all gone and see keynote speeches that you knew was the same speech 300 times in a row. And it's forever that feeling of like, I don't think they know, they know we're here. Have you ever had that feeling like the glass wall is still there, like it's a screen, mm -hmm. and you could just sort of throw it off because you know you could just hit your DVR and back it up and get the same one? Mm -hmm. I can't stand that. So I never say the same thing just exactly the same twice because that just doesn't seem like fun. Only it pisses off note takers. <laughs> uh, I started thinking about what attendees want at events. I started thinking about what your attendees want, uh, and this brought me to the counting crows rule, which I'll do later. Um, but what do attendees want more than anything? They want to belong. When you show up someplace, the very first thing you're trying to do is, please God, let me know someone there. Right? You never don't do that. You walk into a crowded room like this, and you're like, please let me recognize someone from their little avatar head. <laughs> and then you see who, like, you know, is using a 10-year-old picture. Uh, <laughs> or, yeah, the clever half shot. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll find you one day. Um, and we do want to belong. And, and so we have to pay attention to that in our design, in our meeting design, and everything else. And I've seen good mix matchmaker type softwares and things like that, but I'm not talking about software. I'm talking about the absolute commitment of the event and or everybody that you have in the event to actually keep the stragglers and the lonely people moving. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of people who are shy, a lot of people who don't want to identify, and there's a lot of technologies now that allow you to connect. And it's the most amazing thing that you can search almost any conference hashtag and have one person in every single conference hashtag, I've always found one, saying, I really wish that, you know, I could figure out where everybody is, or I wish I knew, like, where, you know, just like, I'm alone, help. <laughs> and they're tweeting it, like, trying not to look, feel like a loser at the same time, which, by the way, is a tricky deal, right? <laughs> it's really hard to be like, wow, I don't feel like a cool kid, uh, and I wish I did. Again, goes back to the county clothes rule. People want to be remembered. Um, one way to do that is take photos of everybody. I learned that from my boss, Jeff Culver. Jeff, back in the day, would walk around with his Nikon D60 and take like 3,000 photos of people. Like I couldn't walk the show floor with him because it was just frustrating. It was just like, come on, come on, get him, let's get a picture, let's get a picture. I felt like a cardboard cutout. And it was like always some wonderful guy from Israel who suddenly wanted to sell me his voice over IP product. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm not even a teleco vendor. I, I work with him. <laughs> It took me years to catch on. What he really just wanted to do is people want to see their face anyway. The so number one thing we want to see is ourselves. The, the, the most pleasing sound in the world is our own name, said by somebody else.